Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bits and more. Link in the description below. All right, welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot sniffing out the Madden cheese. As always, I got some plays for you today out of the New Orleans Saints playbook. This is probably the best playbook in the game year after year after year. It's going to be the topic of my next ebook. Um, it's not finished yet. That's going to be out probably mid month on my Patreon. Uh, there's a lots of different ways you can get these. Um, I'll have a full video here on YouTube as well. Uh, but if you guys want to check that out on my Patreon, you get unlimited uh, ebooks. Uh, link in the description below. But either way, I'm going to show you some plays out of this. I don't think the tight slots is in too many different playbooks. I can't say I did an entire preview of all 32 playbooks on this channel and I don't remember seeing this in any other playbook. So if you're aware of this being in a different playbook, please let me know in the comments section. I would really like to know. I'm sure people watching this would like to know. Uh, but to me, it's unique to this playbook and I, it might have been a more last year, but this year I've only seen the Saints. So we're going to go and we're going to pick the first play. Um, there's so many good plays in this. I'm going to do essentially the same motion uh, multiple times. I don't even know which one would be my favorite play because uh, I typically like to start it off with my favorite play. But I really think the PA pump and go is pretty much up there. Uh, but let me double check real quick. I mean, there's so many different setups that I have here. Uh, so I guess I'll start with the PA pump and go if I go ahead and find that again. Uh, this is a really unique one. I'm going to go ahead and pick that. On defense, we're going to go random, you know, matching, which is a nickel. But the simpler setup is just to put Snead here on one of these, uh, slant Fleener, block the running back. Uh, like I said, Ginn doesn't really do a whole lot, but uh, this is a good bench switch concept, which there worked a lot better than the first play. But like I said, I don't really use that play a lot. I really find the best setup to get Ginn where I want him to go, it, that's a good route, but it doesn't really work inside like this. You need him outside one-on-one. -on -one. You need some sort of cover three, a man coverage, a man press. That'll beat all those routes deep. I find you need more room than this, so I'll move the ball back here in a second. Uh, but Fleener here, on this type of route, if I'm if I'm if I'm isolating the, the circle route, I want to put him on a slant so I have an easy check down, and then I also want to put Snead on that bench switch again, um, so that I have a couple options just in case I got to get rid of the ball faster than I want to. I mean, you can leave uh, Fleener on one of these, and maybe it'll come open underneath, but that's not really the best way to go. Uh, but I think the slant's a little bit better. Always have the running back to block, and uh, I think this would be the best scenario. This looks like a cover two. I'm gonna go ahead and move the ball like I was saying. Because I think that this one here, you probably need a good 50 yards of space. This is a real deep play. You need that space because you're really just going to be floating this ball up. You're not bullet passing this, you're lobbing it. If I get the look that I want. This looks like a cover six, which isn't what I want. And we got the, the deeper route to Thomas. Like I said, that's you got good routes on both sides, really. I mean, this is deep passing all over the place. Just deep, deep routes here. So I'm still waiting for that first man or cover three look. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get it anytime soon. This is actually, uh, you know, but there's still deep options all over. That's a 20 yard check down right there. That was a cover four. So you see how easily that beat up a cover four. But this is just explosive wide open passing right here. Now we got that look we want. And we're going to just lob that up. Hopefully my man can get the separation. He got caught, but you saw what happened. You saw what happened there. Not the best receiver in Gin. But uh, it's all good. So I got. I think that was a man coverage. I'm not even sure. I just saw, you know, you're looking for something in particular. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is the type. This is what you're going to look for. I'm staring. As this play starts, I'm staring at this wide out. And what I'm looking for is if, if this cornerback sits down on the double move. If he sits down and gets tight on the double move, I know it's time to lob the ball the second he passes him. And the second he passes him, let's see where I'm at here. The second he sits on that double move, let's see if I can look at that right now. I'm looking to lob it up. And I'm just tapping the ball. I'm just tapping the button. A lot of people don't know how to do lob passes. You just tap it, and he's gone. If you got a real burner, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think, who am I, who's covering me there? I don't even know. Um... Is that Bradbury? Bradbury is on the fast side, so that's why he actually had a shot. But if you got a real burner, like a Tyree kill, whoo, it's gone. <laughs> You're gone. So let's go back. So let's go ahead and let's run this. So I like this bench switch too. I mean, you're going to get some good opportunities with that bench switch. Not the best play, but it's available right away. Yeah, as far as this bench switch goes, if you're not really familiar with how to read a bench switch concept, um, you're just really reading high or low. If it's a cover two, it's really good against cover two. 
Um, you can see here, I mean, that coverage break is just really hard uh, to get a hold of. We're just making plays out here with Willie Sneed. <laughs> We're just making plays. Um, you could also motion out Thomas, uh, but I find that's not really as good a good way to go. Um, but he'll just, he gets open a little bit better against cover twos. If you motion him out, you see he did there. But yeah, it's a really easy play. Just got to motion this guy out. It does no good in the center. Get as much blocking as possible. And it looks like we have a press situation, which is going to be good for me. Like I said, they're pressing. It's, you know, he's just not really beating them on speed, but you saw what happened. You saw it was available. Uh, I think it's a pretty even speed matchup out there with Ginn and uh, Bradbury. I know Bradbury's kind of fast. And we got that underneath. You see how everything just gets pulled back for that tight end to get open underneath? Your, your, your tight end might be usered, but, you know, that, that bench switch concept should be there every time. So if the, if the tight end's getting usered, you should have Thomas or Sneed pretty much every time. Here we got a, a cover three. Hopefully my pass blocking is set up. He's getting beat. Threw up my back foot a little bit. Didn't quite get the loft out there. But you see, I'm not quite getting away because it's a good corner, but it's working out. I don't know how I'm going to brand this video, but there's just so much good plays going on here. Um, so we're going to keep it moving. Uh, there's really only one good run play in this. And I mean, there's good run plays like the draw and the dive. If you're going to run the draw or the dive, I would say it's best to continue that motion with the tight end or continue that motion with the receiver. Just continue. The motion should be, should be throughout. You should always be motioning players. Um, throughout regardless so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick the best run play and this is the one I'll be running the most is the halfback pitch we'll go ahead and we'll pick that and we'll run out uh, we'll keep running against nickel like I said you want to be consistent with that motion whoever you're motioning just keep motion I'm with you know what I'm saying you always want to create that I'm not this is not the way I'm running I'm actually running to the wrong side but um, if I were to flip the play like it, you want to run to the open side of the field too so all it would do is hit the right stick to a side um, and flip the play. But if I'm running it uh, to a strong side, that would be the best thing to do, would be to motion over Fleener uh, and create like a like a, like a a look like this. Uh, but I actually wanna move the ball uh, back to the center, I think here, because I want more running room. I picked the wrong, I, I could just flip the ball the other way. We're gonna run it from the middle. Yeah, you always wanna make sure you run it to the open side of the field and to the uh, tight end side of the field because your tight end's typically your best, your strongest blocker. Although Fleener's not a great blocker, I don't think. Uh, but you're going to see, oh, that was just hard, man. Peterson, man, you got to get it done. I don't know if Peterson's much of a speed back anymore. He didn't feel very fast on that first run there. Um, this way here, when I motion the tight end, you see he's the furthest out blocker, which is nice. Oh, he's going to get downfield and, and set that edge. He's going to get downfield and set that edge. Let's go. Yeah, it's much better having your tight end on the outside blocking. Because uh, like I said, if you run it this way, he's on the inside, and then you have a receiver trying to set that edge, and that's not as good as a, as a tight end. But I'll show you what that looks like, just to show you the difference. And you see there, it just doesn't have the same effect. I could have went outside for a little more, still about 10 yards. Uh, but the best way to do it is definitely have your, your tight end outside. Let him get on that corner. Let his blocking assignment be that. Look at that. Look at that. There's just nobody here. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is ridiculous. There's nobody there. There's nobody outside. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to keep doing this. Tight end way is obviously the best way, like I said. That's a man coverage. Changes things a little bit. Uh, but it's still going to, you know, try to set my blocker there. It's going to work a lot better against zones. Zones run, run better. I mean, these run plays work better against zones, I mean. Like this here's a zone, so you're gonna see a little bit better of a blocking setup. Man coverage can look at that, look at that, look at that. This is disgusting. See what I mean by the difference between a zone and a man? I mean there's just nobody there. So always look for try to find a weak side motion if you're not gonna do the motion. Although you can see it's much more effective. And uh, I can I'll end it on that. Not a bad carry. All right, so that's definitely going to be it for part one. If you want to see part two, and I'm sure you do, hit the like button and I'll put that out next. Other than that, it's all on my Patreon now. And this will be uh, included in the uh, full breakdown series that I do, as well as uh, the ebooks on Patreon. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Money Shout Out.